down here in the northwest to meet a team of people that specialise in helping women in domestic violence and people in crisis. Domestic violence is a silent killer throughout the UK. It's something we don't really like to talk about, don't want to be judged for. Who do we go to for help? There are refuges and centres up and down the UK with trained people that are there to help you and take you away from this problem. How do we find out about them? Where are they? Today we're going to go and see what one's like and we're going to give you all the answers to the questions you need. Kirsty. Daniela, nice to meet you. Come in. So this is a, a, a home, a, 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 a well we say domestic abuse accommodation, um, so that people come here in, in crisis really and they stay here for up to about 13 weeks and then they move on to their own property and we will continue to help to support them in their own properties okay. so they can go back into a community and, and kind of and start it, to And it's so again. not what you imagine is it? No, it's we bright, bright and, and colourful and, and, yes. and very much and get up around the children. Yeah. So we work with over 150 women and men at any one time. Whilst we get them here, we help them to look at actually what they need. We'll help them to either find work or we do crafts. We encourage people to grow foods and teach them how to cook again. So you basically go back through the life skills for people. Yeah. And do you, I suppose they come here in a moment of crisis from yes. a terrible situation. So you help them with doctors and, and dentists banks and everything anything, else. anything anything and obviously when they first come schools. they're trauma schools they're traumatized so we don't just do that all in one day we take that slowly make sure they settle in well first yeah. we don't judge anyone because and it could happen to anybody because domestic abuse covers over you know goes over all walks of life and it could happen to any of us Where did it start for you? Marriage night, more or less. The night you got married? I did something he didn't want me to do. Uh, the next minute I know he forces himself onto me and just, I couldn't believe what was happening. He was really forceful. A different person? A different person. And at the end, he just said, this is what happens when you don't listen. So this carried on for six years, just abuse and... It was. Mental, mental abuse. abuse. A lot of mental abuse. And he's been very clever. Within the six years, the proper, not sexual, but physical abuse, I can only recall physical abuse as really where he actually hurt me properly is only three times. You don't know what to think. You think it's your fault that he's like this. Or I just made him angry. So the abuse didn't just happen when the two of you were alone. He, he was abusive in front of your child as well. Most of my physical abuse happened in front of my son. He was hitting me and hitting me so hard that I thought I was dying. I just had to scream out loud to stop him. And then minutes after, he's completely fine. My son woke up and told my husband off. Yeah. So that's the very moment that I realised that I just couldn't go so on. You have to stop, yeah. And I had nowhere to go because of my situation. I had nowhere to turn. I know if I went back to my family, they'd just put me back with him. Do you have communal areas for the children, like this yeah. one? Yeah, this is our playroom. After yeah. you. Thank you. Show me. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, as you can see, it's very well used. It's very like nice the, and untidy. I like the chalkboard. The chalkboard, yeah. And, and you've got a quiet area for mums to read. Quiet and area. Kids. We've got um, a computer area. And also, like teenagers once, we've got another area for teenagers. So it's, it's for yeah. everybody, because we do get older children as well, and people forget that sometimes. It's but this is cool, they've got somewhere to play, to make a mess. And to make a mess, and they do make a mess, and they of enjoy course. doing that. Yes. And yeah. for them to be children, which is the yes. most important thing, isn't it? I couldn't have survived a single day if I didn't get help at the, that time. He was just playing with my mind, telling me what to do. He actually told me to write a note before committing suicide. That's terrible thing to say to somebody. 
it, you know, other people should not and do not have the right to control other people's lives and when it starts or stops. And, and you've, you've made a break and you're away from that. And even though it's really hard today, it, you know, the, your worst day right now is never going to be as bad as your best day with him. How do you feel about the future? Scared. I want to go back to my life before I got married. I had a nice life. Okay. I wish I could go back to that. I wish I could go back to my family. I want to, but if you really think about the risk, he's been saying he's going to take my child away. He said he's going to kill me. I can't even remember the person that I was. It took me six months. I've been here six months. Just, um... Please don't get upset. It's really difficult, but you're doing really well. And you can go on to help other people that have been in the same situation as you. You know, like you said, where you're from, what you've been through it isn't seen as a crime. You could revolutionise something and change that for women. Because you've walked in, the, in their shoes. You know, you can save people's lives initially with what you've been through, you know? Because you, you've had the strength to stand up and walk, and walk through it and come away from it. You know, you're lucky to be here. Very lucky to be here. You're a very, very brave woman. This is a communal kitchen, we also use this as a training kitchen. Who would fund somewhere like this for you? Um, we have to fundraise for it. Um, for the whole centre? Yes. We get our funding from councils for the, yep. for the basic. But that's a bare minimum. Yeah, because they've, they've, they've had to have, to have their funding cut from central government and then um, we do our fundraising. Which is hard to yes. do. I met him online. We had a long distance relationship for a year. That was brilliant. Saw him every weekend and then I moved up here. 14, 15 months in and he hit me for the first time three days later. It was a massive shock, huge. Was it just there? It was an argument and he just hit you or? I gone to bed and I was fast asleep, then I got woken up by a headbutt straight into my face, broke my nose, dragged me around the bedroom. Alcohol induced? Very much alcohol induced. induced, absolutely. As much as the relationship is toxic and we know it's toxic, it's your drug of choice. Absolutely. As his would be an alcohol, yours oh, would be him oh, and wow, staying yeah. in, the, in, the, in the relationship. He was my addiction, definitely, definitely. I would say now I'm yeah. absolutely addicted to him. Whenever anything happens in my life, the first thing I want to do is tell him, speak to him. I don't anymore. You can't, yeah. yeah. You can't if you want to live. And I can identify on the addict side of things, with, not on, on, the, on the other part of your story, but on, a, on an addict side of things, I can totally yeah. identify with that. And I can identify with what we do and who we become to get closer to our drug of choice because I've left him 11 times mm -hmm. and gone back. Relapsed. 10 times. And relapsed, yeah. I've been stupid to keep going back, but... But sometimes it's the easy option. Absolutely. And sometimes you think, I feel like a fool for keep doing it. And, and I know a lot of women I speak to say, I just couldn't go to my friends again or go mm. back to my mum again and say, he's done it again, and then let them love me and then two weeks later go back. The reason I left, we'd been away, and he'd basically locked me up and beat me up and sexually assaulted me for four days. I managed to get my phone back off him and texted a friend and she came with the police and they made me go to the hospital. And the doctors and nurses were horrified. At the injury. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was still protecting him. I told the police that he was my friend's boyfriend and whatever else and I made him sort of go away. So they wouldn't arrest him? So they wouldn't arrest him. I lost both my children because of him. The relationship with both of them is very much repaired and we're very close now, but it's taken a long time. It's very hard because our job is to protect them. 
And then they get to a certain age, the kids, and their job is, they think, is to protect us. Oh, they both think they're my protectors now, definitely. And, and it's a lovely thing, but as a parent, it hurts. It really does hurt. I'll get really upset, sorry. I'm getting upset, I shouldn't. Um, because it's hard as a mum. It is hard. It is hard. And you're so trapped. I imagine you feel so trapped of... Couldn't go I have back. nowhere else to go. I can't go back. I've got some really good friends up here. I've been up here for a long time now and I've got some really good friendship groups. But it's hard to oh. push your issues and vent your... your um, your trauma on other people. Well, the thing is, it's me that's gone back and gone back me and gone that. back. So that it's me putting myself in that situation. So I'm not going to burden other people. You know, and, and that is the great thing about these places, is that they will keep you safe. They yeah. will work on you. They will give you the tools you need to, to carry on in life and be strong. And they'll pick you up and put your pieces back together. Oh, so this is one. Yeah, so we've got a, a small um, bath, uh, bedroom, um, a bathroom, and then an area a for. Bathroom. Yeah, so they've got a kitchen area and a small living area. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, so some are a little bit larger than this, so some have areas for the children as well, so we can have bunk beds. Yeah. Um, but it just means that they can actually close the door and have some time as a family. family. Which is which, so important. Yes. Um, but then they can also choose if they want to have some shared space. I've gone 10 years, well, eight years, not feeling safe ever. He comes to my work, he comes to the hospital when I've been hospitalised. He's found me when I've moved. He's found you everywhere. He's never, ever, ever left me. I know being here, I can't ring him. I can't be in contact with him because that's contravening my contract here. I'll be out. But that's what the refuge brings. Not only does it bring a safe haven to sleep, to put your children to bed at night, to eat, sleep, pray, cry, whatever it is you want to do, uh, be happy, learn to be happy again and get well. It also gives you support. It's a safe haven yeah. for women to become strong women again. Best thing I've ever done. Best thing in the last 10 years. The best phone call you ever made. Yeah. I couldn't tell you how safe I felt when I came here first. Yeah. I just felt so safe. At home, I was on edge all the time. I couldn't sleep. Be able to sleep at night. Yeah, I was just thinking. I was keeping shot, keeping quiet, just not knowing when the next blow will come, what he'll do next. My son's so much better, so much different from when we came here. He's changed so much. I'm so proud of that, and I would never have been able to do that if I didn't have this place. And they give you as much or as little input as you want. They haven't overpowered me at all. They give you time. You just know that they're there. They give you time to yeah. start to open up and do your thing. They don't prejudge. They don't preach. Yeah, no preaching involved. It's not a cult or a society. It's just no. a charity. And I, and I think personally that it would be an absolute travesty if, if these places closed down. It would be. So many women would be dead. And there you go. So many women would be dead. Mm -hmm.